What's going on you guys? Rafe Durazi here. So today is Monday the 20, is it the 23rd? It's the 23rd, Monday the 23rd of September. And so I'm just under three weeks out from my competition and I wanted to really push myself the, these last three weeks because I hear you. Because never in the years that I've done competing, which is I think 16, 17, 18, I think three or four years now, I have never been this close to quitting. I've never wanted to quit. This competition prep this time around has been the most difficult, and I'm not talking about the prep itself. The prep itself is very, very hard with the dieting and the training and all that, and abstaining from like drinking and, and eating all this stuff that I want to eat. But what has really made it difficult is just life's curveballs and all the stuff that's been happening that have been completely out of my control and for the most part and have just made it very, very, very hard psychologically and just realistically, financially, all of it. At this point, I haven't even paid for my registration yet. I haven't paid for the tanning package that I need to get. I haven't paid for a lot of stuff. I haven't gotten posing shorts or any of that yet. And that's gonna, that's gonna be like half a grand. That's a lot of money. A lot of you guys know I went to DC for five days to the U United States Conference on AIDS to be there as a social media fellow and I gave a little speech and it was amazing and wonderful but the entire time I had to be off diet because I couldn't meal prep and I didn't have anything available. I was literally just in the hotel constantly. I was working the entire day. Excuse the noise because we've got people here um, renovating the hallways of my apartment building. Yeah, I was in, in, this, in this little bubble that I couldn't get out of for five days so my diet was thrown for a loop and on my way home from the airport in LA as I was coming back after the conference, I got a call from my coworker letting me know that our restaurant had been shut down. My main source of income was gone. No one even reached out to me from the restaurant. I didn't find out until the next morning at the mandatory meeting. We were all being terminated. They are slated to reopen in six, eight, 12 weeks, who knows? They wanna reopen as a new concept. But in the meantime, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no source of like primary source of income. Unemployment told me I wouldn't qualify. I've just been going through the ringer. I've been having like major like ups and downs and just feeling stuck and like I don't know what to do and I've just been like spinning my wheels. I really wanted that restaurant to be my last place of employment. I really, really, as far as the service industry goes, I wanted that to be my springboard into doing social media and influencer stuff and everything that I've been doing for you guys. Reconciling with my ego and all of that and just figuring out what do I wanna do and then all of a sudden the competition was like, does it, does it even make sense financially to throw all that money into this competition when I don't even know if I'm gonna have money to pay my bills in a month um, and I don't have a job yet and all of that. But I've gotten so much support and I've gotten so much encouragement from people saying, you gotta do it, you gotta do it, you gotta do it. But I didn't wanna get stuck in the trap of doing it because everybody's saying do it, do it, do it and I don't wanna let people down and I don't wanna be judged. You know, I wanna do it from a pure place of actually wanting to follow through and do it. Even though I'm so far behind on my diet, I'm so far behind on posing and all this stuff and the finances and all that. At the core of it, at the root, I want to make sure I'm doing it for me. I spoke with my coach and the decision that I made is that basically I'm going to act as if I'm going through with the competition and I'm gonna do it. Everything is gonna go as it's, as it's supposed to and I can always make the choice later to back out. So the point of this video being with all that said and with my mindset and all everything that I've been going through and wanting to share that with you guys, I decided as a challenge to myself, especially now that I'm not working, I, I, I don't have any excuses. I wanna do a daily vlog every single day. I know a lot of you guys have been asking, you've been wanting to see like, what's my routine? What do I do in the morning? What do I do during the day? People wanna see it, perfect opportunity. I'm gonna do a daily vlog up through the competition. So that's basically three weeks of daily vlogs that you guys will be able to see. It's an experiment for me because I've never done it before. It's honestly really scary and terrifying. I don't know why. It's it's like I'm so vulnerable and so much a part of who I am and what I do is I want things to be planned out and I want them to be really good and I like things to be polished. But part of daily vlogging is I kind of just have to roll with it. So this is just about doing, just do it, Nike. This is day one, it's Monday, September 23rd. Day one of my vlog, I'll probably capture some stuff for the rest of the day. This morning I had my workout. Um, I went to the grocery store and got all the stuff I need for meal prepping so I can get back into the grind. And I just took Duke out for a walk. So here we go. I'm currently filming on my good old Canon G7X Mark II that I've had for a while. I haven't used this in months, maybe like a year. Anyway, I gotta put my groceries away because I got raw beef here, just chilling. It's gonna go bad if I don't take care of that ASAP. So if you wanna see my, here I'll show you my meal prep that I did a few days ago. I've got a bunch of potato that's like ready to go. 
The beef, um, I tend to cook as I need it per day just because I like it to be fresh, but sometimes I don't have the time and I just realized, you know, it's okay to cook two, maybe even three days worth of beef ahead of time and not risk not being ready for it when I need it. I think that's a small adjustment that I have to make. I literally bought all the frozen broccoli that was there. <laughs> Usually I go and they only have like two or three bags of this, so they had the entire row filled, so I'm like, I'm gonna capitalize while I can. This is this hard to come by, and I understand why, because it's so easy. And last but not least, Cholula. I was getting the normal size of Cholula, but I realized like how quickly I'm burning through this stuff, so I'm like, just, just get the big bottle, it's okay. Just get it, it's okay. Plastic bag, I'll reuse it. I would love to get a filtration system on my the tap for my sink, but I don't see myself doing that anytime soon in life for circumstances, so some bottled water will have to do in the meantime. I don't know if I'm gonna like how not wide this camera is. You're not gonna be able to see so much of what I'm doing unless I'm constantly maneuvering the camera around, which is a pain in the butt. It's a pain in the butt. Well, this lens is dirty. I'm gonna give you a little wipe real quick. What's going on over here? God, Raif. Raif, get your shit together, man. Uh, let's see, it is noon, it's noon. I got up at like 7.15 this morning, and now it's time to eat breakfast. Yas! Eggs, eggs for breakfast. Oh, I forgot to get paper towels. That's what happens if I don't put it on the list. Guys, I live by lists. My mom used to drive me nuts growing up because she always had lists. She always had lists written on every single like, you know when real realtors used to give you those free pads of paper and pens? She used to have like, ugh, I remember on the bar, she would have that pad there and she just had lists for all day long. And then she tried to like impose that idea on me. She would like leave little post-its on my desk in my room with things I need to do and can you do this, can you do that? And I hated it so much. And now here I am, I've become my mother. Literally, that's all I do is make lists. I function off lists. This is my notepad. I have so, like, I have one for my groceries that I need. I have one for like Target, for all my vlogs. I've showed you guys this before, but like, I literally just endless lists and categories and subcategories and on and on and on. My life is a list. All right, so, it's gonna be four eggs. I'm gonna fry them. Zero calorie mm -hmm. spray. The Cholula, of course, and Himalayan sea salt. Now, while that's going, I like to get my shake going as well. So I'm gonna do that right here. A little refeed on some healthy carbs. Greens formula. Look at that. Nice heaping sco scoop of that in there. Some good old fashioned. Organic cinnamon. About one tablespoon. Or was it a teaspoon? I don't remember. Oh well, cinnamon's good for you. Looks like my eggs are ready to flip. So guy. And I know I said I'm gonna do a daily vlog. I'm not gonna like go through all the exact same things every day. That would be boring and useless. So I'm showing you guys my breakfast today. Tomorrow I'll skip over the breakfast portion and then just get into other things. And I think that's a good idea, right? So this, yeah, this is another gym product. It's just a post-workout formula. It's got some aminos in it. It's got other stuff to help from muscle recovery, muscle repair. So usually at this point, I've realized I gotta get my, my supplement, my pill form supplements ready for the day. I have a little container that I fill and refill every day. So while those eggs are finishing, I'm gonna do that right now. I have almost everything that I'm gonna use in this cabinet right here. I'm gonna start with creatine, ZMA, which is zinc and magnesium, natural testosterone booster, estrogen reducer, fat burner, fish oil, vitamin D3, 5,000 IUs, glucosamine, B complex, my multivitamin, which is for dinner. I said most of the stuff that I put in here is in that cabinet, but I have a couple other things like my like my HIV medication, my um, allergy medicine, and my finasteride, which is for 
for my hair so I so it doesn't like thin or anything. I'm out of my allergies. And I'm allergic to my dog, so I'm gonna need to get some more of that. So for now, I'm just gonna put in my Victarvi, which is my HIV medicine. I'm probably gonna I'm gonna sit down at my computer today and, and have breakfast and stuff so I can also look at emails and go over social media while I'm partaking in breakfast. Never have enough children though. It's the best. Happy Monday. And there you have it. Breakfast. Ta-da! So I wanted to take a moment to talk about my experience with stigma in light of Jonathan Van Ness coming out as HIV positive and this discussion about visibility and the need for people to come out um, with their HIV positive status, not if they don't want to, but if they feel compelled to and if they don't like having to live in fear or in hiding or in secrecy, then it's super important that we have role models and people who are public figures who are by way of living openly and confidently and, and transparently are communicating to everyone else that it's okay to have HIV and to have a happy, healthy, full life just as deserving of happiness and health and love as anybody else. And, and I also did a video recently on Gareth Thomas coming out with HIV. I was just so like struck by the amount of hateful, spiteful, negative comments that I received on that video. It was the most visceral reaction that I had gotten to a video in quite a while. There were a lot of people that just had really had something um, extreme to say about it. And there was so much stigma laden in those comments. The ones that were really disappointing to me personally were the ones that were coming from the gay community, from people who are gay who were embarrassed or ashamed that he was someone who was coming out with HIV and that he was giving the gay community a bad name. These people don't realize that they are the ones who are catering to stigma. Like the stigma is there, that negative perception of what it means to be living with HIV and to be diagnosed with HIV. And then they're trying to do everything in their power to create a perception of our community by distancing themselves from people who have HIV because that it comes with a negative connotation. And it's like, no, bro. Like one person said that we're sheep for supporting Gareth Thomas. And I, and I was like, you're calling us sheep, but like think about who you're trying to cater to and trying to impress and trying to be liked by in distancing yourself from the HIV community. That's stigma right there in action in your subconscious causing you to like hate on, pe on people who have HIV. Like it doesn't make any sense. So I think there's so much stigma still, even in places that you would consider Western world developed in cities that people are supposed to be really educated on it, like here in Los Angeles. So I wanted to talk about my own recent experience with stigma here in Los Angeles, a place where you would think there's a lot of access to education and resources. Last December, I had been going to a barber shop in the valley and I'd been going to this barber shop uh, maybe like several times. I don't know if it was like five, six, seven times. I had a, developed a rapport with the barber and we were cool, we would text and he would respond right away or if I called him, he would get back to me. Like it was just obvious that we were good. Like. The last time that I was there getting my hair cut with him, I, you know, each time I'm opening up more and more and sharing more of my personal life. So the last time I was there, I told him that I was diagnosed with HIV AIDS and that I was doing a lot of like social media work, talking about it, advocacy work. And his response was like, whoa, man, like that's crazy. That's really intense. I don't think I could be able to handle it if that was me in that case. I don't know what I would do, but like so much re mad respect for you for doing that, that's like incredible. He was just like, wow, like baffled by it, but at the same time, like really encouraging in what I was doing. So I didn't think anything of it until I wanted to make a follow-up appointment. And at that point, he didn't respond to my text. And I thought, okay, that's weird, whatever. So I tried again and again, no response. I thought, maybe this guy is on vacation. He's out of, he's not working for a couple weeks or whatever. So I called the barber shop eventually and the person who picks up the phone is like, yeah, oh yeah, he's here right now. He's actually with a client. And I go, oh, okay, that's okay. So um, just tell him that Rafe called and give him my message, let him know that I you know, want to set up an appointment and tell him to get back to me. Here's my number. Didn't hear anything. And so this went on for the course of maybe a month or so to the point where I was like, yo, okay, I don't know why you're not responding to me anymore. I don't know why if you don't want to do business with me for whatever reason, just please let me know. And he just never got back to me. It was hard for me to grapple with and come to terms with the fact that this guy who was really, really cool with me was stonewalling me because he knew that I had HIV and 
I finally just had to like accept that and be like, okay, this guy is not gonna see me again. I have to go find somebody else. Luckily, I found a barber shop here on Melrose called Ace of Fades. I got my new barber, his name is Eugene. He's awesome, he's the best. And so I go see him every week. You know, I'm one of his best guys because I'm always there consistently. Other guy missed out. Sorry, not sorry. I told him about the story like the first, I think the first time I sat down with him and he was just like, that's so effed up. I can't believe that. That's not an issue here. You don't have to worry about that. And it hasn't been an issue. And I'm so, so grateful and thankful for that. But I'm humbled in realizing that there is still a lot of stigma and there is, and people do have to deal with that crap, even here in LA. And then recently uh, I was sitting down with him. I was in his chair one day and he told me, because he and I are friends on Instagram and sometimes we'll post each other on each other's feed or story or whatever, that one of his other clients that he was cutting his hair one day actually mentioned, he goes, hey, you know, I saw one of your other clients on Instagram. He has HIV, huh? Yeah, Eugene's like, yeah, yeah, he does. And the guy's like, well, aren't you worried? Like, doesn't that bother you? Or aren't you worried that like something happen with the scissors or like with your equipment, your tools and stuff. And then it's like realizing that this other guy is concerned for his health and his safety because his barber is cutting someone else's hair who has HIV. That's very ignorant. <laughs> There's so much work to be done if that's people, if people are still afraid of that. It reminds me of, you know, Greg Luganis swimming in a pool and other people not wanting to swim in the same pool of him, as him because he had HIV and they might bleed in the pool and that somehow that might infect other people. Or people made that argument with Gareth Thomas that like, oh, if he had HIV for a while and he's like playing on the field with other rugby players, and he's bleeding, then he's gonna get his blood on other people, and then everybody else is just gonna get infected. And it's like, it's not quite that. It doesn't really happen like that at all. There's just a lot of education that needs to happen. Not only education, but visibility. We need to see people, normal people living, going about their lives. Just having examples in society is important enough to give other people permission to, to be okay with their diagnosis and to live happily. And it isn't to say that we're glorifying, saying yes, Yes, HIV, like everyone needs to have HIV. Woo, yeah, you got HIV, high five. That's not what it's about. It's about saying we are giving props and respect to people who are willing to talk about it openly. And that's a distinction that a lot of people have a hard time grappling with. I've noticed people are like, why are we commending people for getting HIV? That's not what we're doing. We're not saying, yes, go out and get HIV because then you'll be a hero. No, we're saying if you have it, like so many people who are too afraid and too self-hating and too worried to come out with it for fear of repercussions from friends, family, job, society, for those people who are willing to step forward and be open about it as a source of inspiration and as a source of strength for others, that is applaudable and right. <laughs> In light of the campaign that's going on today, hashtag a day with HIV, I wanted to get a picture of myself that was good quality, high quality to post on Instagram. And um, so I used this as a backdrop with that in the background. And I was like, how am I going to focus my camera on manual focus if I don't have a subject to, to work off of? So I ended up, I put this guy right here. See, face height, <laughs> right where I was gonna be standing. I put it right here. And then I went back over there focused my um, camera manually. Then I removed that thing and I have a marker on the ground right here. So I knew exactly where I had to stand so that I would be in focus for that camera. And then I put my camera on um, self timer, 10 seconds and I was just like running back and forth for the past hour, trying to get a good shot, trying to make it look good, different poses. For those of you wondering how like that stuff get, how you can do that on your own when you don't have anybody else helping you. That's just something that I came up with that I do. And yeah, it's a little time consuming. It takes a little work, a lot of running back and forth. I do have a remote control too. I just haven't set it up yet. So that would be helpful to just be able to like try different things and stay in one spot and, and use the remote. But um, there are ways to do it. It was, took, took me a cool hour and I got my Instagram post. And by the time you're watching this, it, it'll be on Instagram. You'll see it. TV in the background and the potted plant. Check it out. Okay, so I took a little nap earlier. Then I was going through emails and stuff on my MacBook, 
when I came across a little email from one of the producers over at Loveline. Loveline was a radio show that used to be on um, K-Rock, now it's on Channel Q. It's an LGBTQIA plus focused uh, radio station. And I had met Dr. Chris Donahue a while back, just serendipitously, and we had talked about possibly bringing me on. And so the producer decided to invite me to be on to interview tomorrow night for Loveline and in light of Jonathan Van Ness coming out as HIV positive. So that's a um, you know, perfect inroad to talk about coming out as HIV positive and dating and all of that stuff that applies to Loveline. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is what they sent me, um, where it's at. I gotta send them a photo, bio, stuff like that. So yeah, super excited about it, looking forward to it. And yes, I'm still wearing my camo shorts from earlier. I took a nap, even though I hadn't showered yet. I'm disgusting, I'm a filthy animal. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna get the headshot, bio, and then I'm gonna try to squeeze in another 40 minute, 45 minute cardio session. And then I want to get some vlog stuff done for tomorrow before my meeting with AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Cool. <laughs> so it's 10 p.m. I've been answering emails, talking a little bit with my agent. I was on call for another possible gig coming up this week. That's a cool opportunity if it if it pans out, if it works well. And now I'm gonna go, I wanna go to the gym in the apartment building to do a, a quick 45 minute cardio sesh. I know the words quick and 45 minutes together don't really make sense to most of you. For me, it's on that bed. All right, so I'm here in the apartment gym. It's actually supposed to be closed at 10 p.m. and I'm getting here after 10, so I'm being quiet just so that I don't bother anybody and get kicked out. All right, see you guys on the other side of 45 minutes. Okay, just finished my 45 minute cardio and now I'm gonna take Dookie out since he's been waiting patiently for me. There he is. Oh my good boy babies. Oh Bubba. You ready to go outside? Ready to go outside? Oh yeah. Let's go buddy. Let's go Bubba. Come on baby. 